So I went to Home Depot and I purchased a tough shed. I got lazy, I was like, I'll let them do it. It was kind of expensive too, but I don't know why I let them do it. Honestly, it's be a fun project to do. And uh, long story short, didn't work out. The pieces that they brought on the flatbed, they didn't fit together, like they didn't assemble them correctly. And all the ends, like the studs were split out from their framing nailer from the factory. It was just, you know, all the framing was all like knotty and splitty and just bad quality. However, before they realized that all those pieces were wrong and I canceled the order, they installed this thing in my yard. Now, um, I got my refund and everything minus $250. They said I can keep this for 250 bucks. So we're gonna work off of this base um, the thing is though, I don't want to keep it here anymore. It's a 10 by 12 tough shed and I'm gonna move it back there to the side of the house. That way it's not taking up any of our yard space and it'll fit perfectly back in there. I already measured it out back here. These little stakes in the ground is 10 by 12. So it's, it's gonna fit perfectly right here. It's gonna cover up the window, it's gonna cover this up. Now, if I need to make an access door over here for accessing the window, I could you know, totally do that at some point. But the project now is to get that, which is completely level. They leveled it out and everything for me. Uh, the only thing is, this is way more slanted here. So I need to block and shim very high over here. The reason I bought it also, if they come out to, uh, disassemble it it has to be scrapped so i don't know if taking this thing apart and putting it back together is a good idea well, we'll see what happens timber's uh helping out digging the roots up and pretty much just digging this down and leveling it out because this is pretty uneven so i'm trying to just obviously level it out so once that's done i'm going to put pavers on top of this looser dirt before i put the foundation and bring it over here so that way it's not sitting straight on dirt. It'll be at least be up off the dirt. And it may settle as well. And if and when it does settle, I can always shim it. All right, well, the sun's going down. I've been leveling the yard for a couple hours. And I think I got this pretty flat. These might be tricky to put back together because it's gonna be so close to the edges. It would be so much easier if I had help, you know, three guys on each side, lift it and just carry it over and set it down. Well, maybe I can engineer something to do it. Can't really do any pulleys or anything. Maybe some jacks wouldn't work. Maybe jacks with uh, plywood on the ground would work. Plywood, make a plywood floor, basically, buy a couple jacks at Harbor Freight. That would be cheaper than hiring people. And then slowly move it that way i don't know i'll have to think about I'll figure it out all right so i got thinking it's still the same night um i got thinking and i just took all those pieces off because i had checked the thickness of this frame and it is galvanized steel but it's real thin and i can move i could pick this thing up with one hand it's pretty light so I think if I get in the middle and maybe have help from one other person, we could kind of lift it up and walk it over and set it down without having to take it apart. That's best case scenario. Uh, these pieces of OSB are actually pretty heavy. So, all right, it's the next morning. I kind of want to bring this entire thing over and set it down and then check for level. And then I can figure out where the blocks need to go because there's no use in putting the blocks over there now and then trying to line everything up and set it on top of the blocks. How am I gonna get it over there? I'm gonna try lifting it from the middle and then walking backwards and over. I think I could do it by myself. I guess I'll find out in a minute. All right, thought about it for a couple seconds here and I think I know how we're gonna move this over to there without any other people helping. And the answer is right in front of us. I think we can take some buckets and lift this up and put maybe one or two buckets on this side, lift up the back end, slide it down, and then turn the buckets the opposite direction, put one on this side and one on that side, 
and then just push it forward. I think that would work. So the buckets are holding the weight. Like I said, it's not super heavy. It's just impossible to pick up from the middle. Um, it's just too, it's too, it's too heavy for that, but this should work. I'll probably do this with one hand and film the whole process. Let's see if it works or not. All right, lifting it up. Now I gotta use two hands. All right, I moved it about three or four feet. This bucket got crushed, but it was already cracked. That's why I used it. Uh, that one's also cracked on the bottom, but that one held up. All right, making some progress here. This is just five or 10 minutes later. Got the buckets kind of, the buckets aren't really rolling like I wanted, but I am able to just slide uh, the, the floor on top of that just a little bit at a time, maybe a foot or two at a time. And the, the hard part's over. I had to come around this corner and fit around all this stuff here, like the the big rock and the, the drain and stuff. So, all right, almost there. All right, here's the block and shim graveyard. I got, got it all the way over here. As you can see, it's at a level. Basically, this side has to come down, which is good because it's up a little bit. I just have to do a little bit of digging around here. I'm gonna put blocks all the way around and underneath it to give it a nice solid floor. All right, it's about two hours later, I guess, and I got pretty much the whole perimeter uh, blocked off and level. I just rechecked it one last time to make sure that it was level and sturdy. And what I mean by that is nothing moves around. There's no gaps. Everything is solid. So um, the next thing is to replace the floor. And on each piece, before I took it apart, I put a little mark with a number. So that way uh, I'll know what pieces go where. Like that's number two and two. Those two pieces, edges will get put together. And Timber's been helping, digging as I dig, picking out roots and stuff, right? Want another root? There you go. There you go. All right, so I'm in the process of putting the floor in and I put some gold and some silver and a note in there for a future finder. So maybe it'll be a kid or something or just somebody interested in treasure hunting in the future. But the note basically says, if you find this in the year, 2060 or later don't bother contacting me because i'll be dead but if you do find it send a picture of the note and the container and the contents um i'll just put it right there and that'll be pretty awesome anyway uh by the way i have little caches like that all around the property since i've been renovating and stuff hiding all sorts of things all right i got the back of the truck loaded up all tied down, 12 footers, 10 footers, and some sheathing here for the walls. This is the stuff that I had cut at Home Depot uh, using the calculations for a 12 foot wall sloped down to 10. That was the idea, right? However, when I took one of these 12 footers and, and leaned it up, it goes up to the roof and I don't want it that high. I could probably do it, but that's stupid. And it would cover up the bathroom window there. So I kind of want to just go to the bottom of the bathroom window, which is nine feet. This is going to be a nine foot wall. This is going to be all the other three walls are going to be eight foot. Because like I said, it's going to be a lean to. All right. So I'm not sure exactly when the last time I made a shed update video, but we had already went on vacation, came back, it stormed, it was snow and everything. So I covered it up. Uh, I did purchase some wood. This is some 10 footers, 12 footers, eight footers, a bunch of sheathing here. Also painted the garage while I was painting the sheathing because this is the color I chose for the shed. Um, this is some more 12 footers under here. And this is some uh, Z flash. Um, right now I'm gonna go ahead and start framing this thing out. So first I gotta do a bunch of cutting, get all my uh, studs the right size. And we'll go from there. All right, so I just laid out the top plate and the bottom plate. 
stood them up on end, made sure the crown's on top. Now I'm gonna go ahead and lay them out for studs. Um, and then we'll go from there. So laying these things out, it's real simple. I just have, uh, like I said before, I have uh, the top plate and the bottom plate just laid out. I'm gonna measure an uh, inch and a half. And then for each stud, let me use my right hand. Uh, we're gonna measure 15 and a quarter, 16 and three quarters, every 16 inches, right? So for here, we're gonna go, the reason we're doing that is because that's the thickness of each stud. That's exactly where the stud's gonna go. And then basically when I'm done marking them all, just take my square and mark both plates. As you can see, I got the uh, first wall done here. Starting to put the sheathing on. You can see down here, I didn't uh, paint all the way because I had it leaning up against the house and I didn't want to get paint up there against the house. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and nail these down. I've got some uh, two inch framing nails. These are galvanized for outdoor. I'm gonna uh, nail those on, the sheathing on. And then I have a little overhang down on this side. Up on this side, you can see um, there's a gap here because this is a nine foot wall and these are only eight feet tall. So I have some more pieces over here that I can cut to the right size, put them in there, and I have to make sure to make them, you know, an inch and a half taller for the, the double uh, the double top plate there. All right, well, it is, we probably have another hour, maybe an hour and a half of daylight. I've got all the sheathing on. Um, I did some touch up paint on it. And now um, is the trick of lifting this thing up. I started with just a two by four to get under each side. Then I turned it up on its end to bring it up a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. That's my pellet rifle target right there. And it's tall enough that I can stand there and I can actually lift it up to about here, but then getting it past that point and up is tricky. So I'm gonna take some, uh, some more wood just pieces that are a little bit longer than that. I'm going to continue bringing it up till I can uh, stand it up on my own. We're getting there. I just want to make sure that I get this wall stood up before I go to bed tonight. So that way I can start on the next wall tomorrow. Another thing is, if you're wondering why I put the sheathing on now, if you haven't figured it out already, I only have a foot between the wall and my house. So once the wall's up, there's no way to put the sheathing on after the wall's up. Same thing with this side uh, two by four on each side and put one single screw in there and then so as I lift it in the middle little bit by little bit this will dig down and keep it where it is we'll see if that works uh, if not then we'll figure something else out all right well it seemed to work however we slid off the end here. So I think the easiest thing would be to get this thing all the way up and then maneuver it from there, I guess. I think it's heavy. But it worked. One step at a time. All right, so after a little bit of thinking and making blocks and things to make sure that I don't rip that sheathing off. I was able to get that back up on there. Uh, we have one wall up, pretty much. It's not fastened down yet, and it's not square yet. You can see I still have to tap it this way, another three inches or so. But that was, uh, that was a project. I'd like to get another wall done, but the sun is gone and uh, not gonna have enough time for that but yeah definitely made some progress today I am thankful for the good weather that we're gonna have this week and I hopefully will have wall number two up tomorrow maybe wall number three and four too we'll see how it goes so I have all my blocks in they're not properly spaced yet I actually missed a block right there too so that's just to um, I put those in before I stand it up because if I didn't, it would be super flimsy. And this kind of just gives it more rigidity as I pick it up. Last thing I want is this thing to fall down on me. Because this is, you know, I mean, that thing must weigh 400 pounds, 500 pounds. So now I just got to measure these correctly, nail them in, put the sheathing on, lift it up. 
All right, I got the sheathing on the back. It's all nice and even. We've got a four inch gap all the way here and one inch overhang on this side. And thing is, I don't think I showed this in the last video, but this stuff here is called the Z flashing. And thank you, Timber, for licking my hand. Pretty much this stuff here, it, it keeps a watertight gap between two butted ends. So uh, before I put this on though, I'm gonna measure uh, the sheathing and I'm gonna keep a one half inch um, gap here for when I do the rafters. So basically this is four inches. So I gotta make a three and a half inch strip. Uh, well, I gotta make three, three and a half inch strips that are four foot long. All right, so we're on day three of this thing. Um, got this wall up, this wall up, and I got that um, third wall up to kind of tie everything together. Um, it was starting to get dark when I started that. I just wanted to get that thing together overnight so I knew it wasn't going to collapse, you know. So um, yesterday I just put one screw in this side, one screw in the other side, just to prevent it from falling down. Today I have to level everything out and then re-screw it together. All right, I just got the top plates on and I'm marking out the rafters here uh, every 24 inches on center. So I need seven rafters. They're gonna go, they're gonna slant from the high wall to the low wall, which is only a difference of like eight inches, but it's at least a slope. I already have my OSB for the roof. Um, I already have my shingles for the roof. Everything else is looking pretty good. And yeah, now I just got to basically go get some food, determine how much more wood I actually need, and then uh, pick that up at Home Depot and hopefully get this thing at least get a roof on it uh, before the sun goes down. We got plenty of time. It's only noon, not even noon yet. All right, it's about an hour later, maybe, maybe two hours. Still haven't gone to eat yet, but I went ahead and uh, I just nailed these rafters in. Um, next, I have to go, actually I have to go back to Home Depot. I don't have enough sheathing to do uh, the fronts here. I do actually, but it's, when I cut it, it's not the right size. It's, uh, they're too small. Timber's eating a Coke bottle and pretty much every other scrap of wood that I had over here from the radial arm saw, but uh, I should have enough sheathing or OSB for the top. I just need to go get some, let's see, I got, there is only two here, right? Yeah, I miscounted somehow. So those two, that'll do the entire, you know, front or the back. I probably need another two pieces of sheathing. And then I just got to get the roof on. Should probably do the roof first. That way I, I don't have to just squeeze through the door. I have more options. I'll do that after I get back. All right, it's day four, I think. It's been 67 degrees the past couple days and we still have snow because the sun's so low that it doesn't hit this part of the, of the yard. So I've got a bunch of snow here. There's a bunch of snow under this tarp as well and mud. That's why the tarp's down, so I don't track mud everywhere. But we've got all four walls up. We've got the OSB in. All I have to do now is cut these uh, pieces of sheathing. I painted them yesterday. They're ready to cut. And I'll do all that once I get back from morning walk with the dog. It is December 21st. And there's the garter snake in the snow. I see him probably twice a week. And I walk here seven days a week. He's, he's a tough one. <laughs> he goes back under the sidewalk every time. He's gonna, he's gonna snap you on the nose. All right, well, we're now on the roof. I put this uh, underlayment here before I put my started putting my shingles on. Um, I think I'm gonna have to get more shingles though. This is already like a pack and a half. And I only had three packs total, so I'll probably only make it to like here. With what I have, I'll have to get another pack, maybe two, to 
finish this off. All right, so here's the shingles. I finished up last night in the dark on the last row up here, but it's looking pretty good. I just had to double check my work before I started on the next project, which is gonna be the doors here. All right, so the next part is to build the doors. And then the last part is going to be to build the ramps. I'm gonna build a ramp on each side to make it easier to come in and out of this thing. I'm just gonna go ahead and lay out this OSB. I'm gonna cut it out to the size of the door. The door opening about a half inch uh, narrower all the way around. Frame it out with two by fours, put a piece of sheathing on it with an overhang of about an inch. Uh, we'll do all the trim and stuff at the end. We have to do that uh, times two because we have two doors. I just gotta make sure that they're both exactly the same size before I start. All right, so I got the doors put together, framed out, and um, I didn't put the sheathing on until uh, right now for two reasons. One, because it's a lot lighter carrying it without the sheathing already on it. I learned that from raising the walls. Um, it's just so much lighter without this stuff. And then uh, also because now I can fit it exactly to where it's supposed to go. What, you want? I'm not paying attention to you, so you're mad at me, huh? All right, I think it's safe to call it done. I've got all the trim work all completed. All the white, that's all the trim. Um, I don't know if I can see the roof from here, but it's all shingled. I've got my drip edge all the way around. And this part right here, I'm gonna seal it all up uh, at some other point. I'm just gonna put two by fours in there. Um, I don't have to worry about leaks or anything because I'm underneath the overhang of the house. Um, on this side, same thing. The door. I do have to put handles on the inside because there's no way of me closing this thing. But I do have handles on the outside. There. A latch there. Um, also, these little spots here where I nailed, I got to touch those up. Got a couple blowouts over here, but nothing a little bit of uh, paint will fix. Took me five days total. Five days, if you don't include the base, because that took probably a day to move it from where Tough Shed originally put it. I had to disassemble it and put it over here. So I guess we could safely say a week. It took a week to build this thing. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up. If you have any uh, suggestions, questions, comments, just leave them down below. I'll read them. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.